Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zachariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leapt within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, You are blessed by God above all other women, and your child is blessed. What an honour this is, that the mother of my Lord should visit me. When you came in and greeted me, my baby jumped for joy the instant I, I heard your voice. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. It's a really interesting reading and it's just made me go, wow. So the first wow is Mary's journey. Now, there's a lot of questions that come to my mind about Mary's journey. How did she hurry to the hill country of Judea? Where was the hill country of Judea? Well, if we have a look at this map, we're talking not near Nazareth, where she and Joseph lived, though she wasn't with Joseph at that time, but right down here, possibly even further than Bethlehem. Well, that's 90 miles if you want to avoid Samaria, which people did want to because of um, trouble, and or, or even going by the coast, it's 90 miles. So Mary was just a teenager at the time. How did she make this journey? Were there family with her? Did other people go with her? What did she go on? Did she travel by donkey? How did she hurry? How do you make a donkey go faster? Was she running? What did she take with her? What was she thinking on the journey? She wasn't able to send a message ahead of her. She wasn't able to share what was going on in her head. And how was she feeling? How was she feeling having received this news? Had she spoken to Joseph at this time or not? Maybe that was a conversation she still needed to have. But this was 90 miles. We don't know the answer to many of those questions. But what wows me is this journey. 90 miles there and 90 miles back again. Wow, that blows my image of a pasty-faced, angelic, sweet Mary. She was a tough teenager. The second wow. When Mary enters Elizabeth's home, Elizabeth's baby leaps for joy and she's filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I know what it's been like to have a baby that kicks and moves in your stomach, but for a baby to leap with joy, what excitement for Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was immediately overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And as she was overcome by the Holy Spirit, she was able to see immediately what had happened to Mary. She knew that Mary was really highly favoured and Elizabeth um, rejoiced with her at this news. And you have to remember here that in their relationship, Elizabeth was a much older woman past the age of childbearing, so people thought. And Mary hadn't even got to that stage. There was a real imbalance in their relationship, or there would have been until this time. And suddenly the older woman is willing to say, hey, you are so blessed. What an honour it is to have the mother of... Now here, Elizabeth doesn't say the mother of the Son of God, the Most High, like the angel proclaimed to Mary. But she didn't, she didn't proclaim this. She said two words. She said, what an honour it is to have the mother of my Lord come and visit me. Wow. My Lord. So this Christmas, I'd like us just to ask the Holy Spirit to help us acknowledge that Jesus is not just the Son of the Most High, proclaimed by the angels, but also he is 
your Lord and my Lord. Amen.